Hindu Analysis Editorial by Rathod Ayer. Thank you, Rathod Ayer. Really took help of the Hindu Analysis to enrich my content. Really Hindu Analysis article. Rathod Ayer. Hindu Analysis Editorial. Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS Academy. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 22nd June 2024. So let's get started with our discussion. And here I'm taking Delhi edition of Hindu. So whichever edition that you're having, you can go through that edition. So there will be no problem with the edition. Okay, so this is a front page. And I want to say there are two important things that will be guiding in entire your journey. So you should not leave those two things. First one is your UPSC syllabus. So UPSC syllabus will be guiding you in entire your journey till you get into your services. So you should not leave that. And second one is you need to practice previous questions. So previous questions practice is very important. Because from that only you can understand how questions can be asked in your UPSC, especially from current effects. So if you see that, then only you can understand from which article how question can be framed by UPSC. Okay. So these two things are guiding light. So please do follow them for sure. Yes. In this front page, I see there is one article which is relevant from our examination point of view. That is patent filings. Credit Bharat Biotech as inventor of Covaxin omit CICMR. So what are the keywords here? So before seeing this article in detail, I want to let you know how our news analysis will go on. So how this news analysis will be helpful from prelims and as well as mains point of view. So first I will be taking article. In that article, we will be seeing title first. After seeing title, we will be identifying the keyword which is important from our examination point of view. And after seeing keyword, we are fixing in our syllabus where exactly that keyword fits. And we are going to see interlinking of subjects. So from how many subjects it is relevant. So we will be seeing interlinking. And after this interlinking, I am going to give you dimensions. So in which dimensions you have to think from that topic because multi-dimensional approach is very useful to write a very good essay and as well as your mains answers. So to clear this examination, so mains is the very important thing, right? And after saying dimensions, we are going to see what is the summary of that article. And after summary, we are going to see what are the key insights of that article. And after seeing insights, we are going to connect with our basics or static. And here I am going to give you mind maps so that you can use them directly whenever you are writing your mains answer. And after that, I am going to give you practice questions of both prelims and also mains. Okay, prelims and mains practice questions will be given. So in this way, our analysis will go on. And how this is very important? Because we are identifying the keyword and we are fitting in the syllabus and you will be studying what is that article saying and here we are connecting with our static again. And again, you will be getting mind maps and as well as practice questions. So in this way, our analysis is a very integrated approach. And this is the way of reading current affairs to clear your examination for sure. Okay, you have to follow this method only. And now I want to announce one thing. We in Rathod's IS, tomorrow we are going to have orientation session on mains answer writing. On mains answer writing. We have orientation session tomorrow at 4 p.m. So this orientation uh, session, it is both on online and offline. So if you're staying in Hyderabad or if you're staying in this Ashok Nagar, you can come to our institute, which is located at pillar number 36. Okay, pillar number 36, exactly opposite Vijaya Medicals. 
in Ashoknagar, Hyderabad. So if you can't come to this institute in Hyderabad, you can download our Rathod's IES app. So in that app, you will be getting live of this mains answer writing orientation session. So after this, we are going to start our daily answer writing practice course from Monday. From Monday onwards, we are going to have this daily mains answer writing course. And if you are the person who are struggling with writing a very good answer, and if you don't know like how to write an answer and how you have to write answer for certain keywords and how you have to interlink questions and how to write an essay and how to answer your case studies. So this session is for you students, you will be getting benefited the most. Okay, and later on you can join this answer writing program. Okay, so that is the thing I want to say. Okay, now let us see the first article. So first article is a it is about especially talking about what is this patent okay so patent patent is the keyword that you have to see from this article so where we can fit in our syllabus so we have gs paper 3 under science and technology for example something you invented or you discovered new thing yes you can apply for patent and even this Patent which comes under part of intellectual property rights, IPR, and it is also again part of your economy. So, economy comes under again your GS paper 3. Okay, so these are the two subjects where we can connect with this topic. Now, let us see the dimensions what you have to see from this article. So, first you have to see what is this patent why or why we need this patent what are the advantages of this patent and now what are the challenges we are facing so these are the things that you have to know okay let us see this article in detail now so first title says patent filings credit bharat biotech as inventor of covaxin and even there is one more keyword that is covaxin okay we have to see that also we should not leave anything so it is talking about covaxin so covaxin is nothing but covid 19 vaccine and we can say like it is one of the important achievement of india that is we developed vaccines in india against this covid 19 within a very short period of time as par with other countries like developed countries of europe right so here you have to know topic called as vaccines and in this vaccines we have different types so which type of this vaccine is because already you got question in your upsc prelims 2023 regarding this vaccine okay you have to know about this vaccines and its types and how this vaccines will work that is mechanism of working of vaccines You have to know mechanism of working of vaccines. So these are the things again important. Okay, now this article says that so two things involved in this development of co-vaccine. So first one is Bharat Biotech and second one is ICMR. ICMR and Bharat Biotech they together came and they developed this co-vaccine. But now what happened? So Bharat Biotech got patent for this Covaxin, but not for this ICMR. So because of this, this is the news. So if these two coming and developing, that means these two need to have the patent, right? But only Bharat Biotech have the patent now for this Covaxin. So because of this, this is the news. This is injustice, right? Yes. Now let us see the key highlights which are given in this article. So first one is patent filings by Bharat Biotech suggest that only their personal are credited. Okay, as the people who invented this Covaxin. But here now, the important question which raised by society here is, yes, even ICMR is also collaborated with this Bharat Biotech. But why this ICMR didn't get the patent? So this is the one question. 
and next one is patent filings and the health ministry claims of joint ownership of ip rights highlights a lack of transparency in development and ownership of vaccine so if everyone knows that yes this covaxin had been developed by bharat biotech and icmr but now only bharat biotech got this patent or it came up with filings of patent so because of this now again there is one more question on transparency in this ipr that is intellectual property rights and next one is this patent applications they provide concrete evidence of involvement of this bharat biotech india limited personal in the invention of covaxin so because of this it is going to impact future discussions on ownership and distribution of vaccines okay so once they are getting patent means the authority will be in hand of now bharat biotech but not icmr so now the question is who will be going to uh, have the ownership of this covaxin and who will gonna export or who will gonna distribute this covaxin is one more question now okay so these are the some important things which are given in this article okay that's it nothing more yes now let us move on to basics and let us try to understand what is this patent patent is nothing but it is one of the important component of ipr in india and under which act they are governed they are governed by patents act of 1970 so what exactly what is the definition of this patent patent is nothing but government granted exclusive right for invention for example i invented this pen and now it is my personal asset so if if i want to give it to you you have to pay something for me right so this is the exclusive right so i can use this only so it is my property okay so it is a exclusive right for an invention which can be either a product or it it can be either a process of making something or doing something new okay or offering a new technical solution to a problem so whatever it may be if you are the owner of that so and so invention then you can file a patent and now let us see what is the benefit of this patent regime so if for example if i invented this bottle but there is no credit to me means whether any whether if i want to do something new can i do no right so here if you want to boost innovation if you want to encourage innovation yes you need to have this type of patent regime okay so patent will promotes especially research and development and innovation okay and this type of new things are very important for medicines right for medicines or for any procedure of medicine is yes, this innovations and re research is very important if there is no patent means so there will be no innovation no research so that there will be no problems for the for the there will be no solution for the problems and next one is even if you are having good knowledge normally for example if i am a person who is having the good knowledge i am doing something new i am getting something new means some people they will be sponsor me to do something better great so in the same way if you are having a strong patent regime in the same way you can attract more foreign investment right strong patent protection can attract greater foreign direct investment and even there are number of mnc's multinational companies they are ready to invest where there is innovation and next one is it will also increase or promotes our exports okay it will also promotes our exports so these are the some important benefits of having good patent regime yes now let us see what are the challenges which we are facing in our indian patent system so in our indian patent system there is very low private sector investment right so india's private sector spends very less in research and development when we are comparing with other countries like you can see china japan how they are investing so in the same way in india there is a very less participation of private sector and next one here is especially in india if you want to go for development or like research and development so government will be spending more okay so because of this if government is spending there will be some limitation so it will be not able to spend more 
because already it having its own problems right so here we can expect there will be limited spending on this research and development and next one here is problem of compulsory licensing so here provision of compulsory licensing that can deter foreign companies in investing in india so even there is a fear of misuse in india and next important problem is prevention of evergreening of patent for example normally this patent will be given for 10 years of time so after this 10 years what happen so the people who are getting this patent they are going for renewal of their patent so this concept is called as evergreening of patent so these are the some important challenges of indian patent system yes now it's questions time so first i want to give you prelims question which of the following criteria must an invention meet to be patentable in india first one is novelty next one is innovative step and third one is industrial application and fourth one is not fall under non patentable inventions as per section 3 and 4 of patents act so which is the correct answer so tell me the code which is given below so you have to apply that code and tell me so answer for first prelims question i am waiting guys so please do post your answer in the comment box don't forget and next prelims question what is the term used for strategy of extending life of patent by making minor modifications to original invention so i said just now and even this is a third challenge of indian patent system so which is that a evergreening third one is compulsory uh, licensing and next one is patent pooling last one is cross licensing so which so what is the answer for the second question let me know in the comment box comment box okay don't forget and let us see next question which is main question discuss the significance of robust patent regime in fostering innovation and economic development in india provide examples to support your argument so these are the prelims and mains practice questions of this first topic okay now let us see the second topic so there is nothing much important in your city page state speech directly you can move on to your editorial page today okay don't waste much time here in reading irrelevant articles you can directly move on to editorial page so in editorial page there are good number of articles so this article is talking about national testing agency which is regarding neat examination so we are not going to focus because already we had enough discussions regarding that topic okay now let us see the next topic a mandate for a new economic approach so this article is very important and let us see what are the key highlights of this article so if you see here central theme which says that to continue with the winning formula economic policy of past decade would be to ignore people's verdict which is a reflection of their discontent so if you have seen this year 2024 lok sabha election result so before we got result before on june 4th whatever the exit polls are there so they said that bjp government is going to have the more number of seats but after but after result we know the reality that now they formed coalition government with help of tdp so and so other political parties right yes yes this article says that yes people are focusing on what government is doing so how they are governing our country so based on that yes they gave their votes it is not blindly so this is the thing which mainly said and now here we have to focus on especially what are the problems are there in our economy so why people they voted for other party okay so here there are some problems like food inflation we have increasing of unemployment rate and we have infrastructure deficit so these are the problems are there so how we have to come with the solutions so all these things are given here 
So first one here is yes, people they are showing some discontent. Okay, so recent election result they reflect that yes, there is public dissatisfaction. Why? Because of prevailing economic conditions. For example, if I go to any market, tomato prices yesterday it was like one hundred and twenty rupees in city in Hyderabad. So here, because of increasing of prices of food, what happens? So whatever we are getting. to eat so we have to compromise earlier we used to take 1 kg of tomatoes now we can take just 250 grams of tomatoes because of that increasing of price so will you satisfy no and next one here is there are also some roots of discontent okay why because of increasing of food price so inflation is nothing but increasing of price of goods in market and food means increasing of price of food and even there is increased unemployment rate So even after completing your education, like even after you are becoming graduates, so here many graduates they don't have proper employment opportunities. So we can say there is increased unemployment rate, and there is significant factors which are leading to this economic discontent. And because of that, here because of this economic conditions that we are seeing now, like increasing of food prices, unemployment, etc. that is having impact on the daily lives of the people right and even this article says that there are some infrastructure deficit also like if you want to use any transportation for example if you see railways so recently accident happened right and if you see here buses so there is increased uh, people will be there so even people will be standing on the steps especially if you see the buses which are going to the college areas Okay, so there are some infrastructure deficit in, in almost all fields. For example, in agriculture. For example, in transportation. For example, in water supply, right? And even food production is not much focused here. So actually, what happened? There was number of uh, farmers who are belonging to this Punjab and Haryana region. So they went for rasta roko for increasing of MSP, right? so here even there is increased prices of this pulses and even what happened increasing of price of pulses price of vegetables price of oil that will leads to increasing of overall food price okay that is the one thing here and even regarding railways and water we have some challenges especially in major cities we have this water crisis like bangalore like uh, delhi so in those areas they are having this water crisis we are discussing from last a few days and even public sector is also which is used to provide some service it is not providing the proper services okay so because of this there is a long standing development issues are there and these are the one important challenges of our country okay and now let us see in our economy what problems we have we have to understand our economy right So what are the problems? The first one is yes, there is increasing of unemployment rate, and there is dominance of what informal sector. And next one is there is income inequality. So in this inequality also we have income inequality and as well as regional inequality. And next third problem here is distress in agriculture. in agriculture there is very low productivity decreasing of productivity we can relate again with climate change and also there is increasing of farmer indebtedness and fourth one is inflation in market increasing of prices and we are also having challenges from monetary policy committee of rbi and next one is there is infrastructure deficit like transport logistics and urban infrastructure deficit is there and next one is education and skill development so there is no proper quality education is providing anywhere and even whatever the skill we have there are gaps in the skill and next one is we are having challenges on healthcare so there is no proper access and there is no proper quality and affordable healthcare in india and next one is environmental sustainability is also problem there is increasing of pollution there is increasing of greenhouse emissions there is increasing of global temperature 
and in turn that will leads to climate change and next one is we are having a problem of physical deficit and as well as debt so there is high physical deficit and even there is high public debt or government debt so all these are the problems that we are facing in our indian economy and you have to know about this problems detailly yes now let us see the mains practice question because from this uh, area you will be getting only prelim only mains based question but not prelims okay so question here is despite being one of the fastest growing economies india faces significant challenges in addressing unemployment rate and dominance of informal sector analyze the reasons behind these challenges and suggest measures to mitigate them so here you have to write what are the challenges you are facing just you can give this mind map and you have to analyze like you have to write what are the reasons for these challenges okay that's it clear yes and now let us move on to our page and here there is one article it is regarding a progressive indian policy on myanmar outline so here there are some dimensions you have to see okay so this is our northeast and here we have myanmar so here we know that india is sharing direct boundary with myanmar right so actually myanmar is not under the government rule it is under military junta okay it is under military rule from last 3 years so even here because of this military rule now many people they are entering into india okay they are entering into india so here what is the role of india how can india play an important role to make it democratic country so that is the thing which is given here so where can we fit this article in gs paper 2 under international relations and that to in india and its neighborhood okay so from all these things that you have to see and actually this article says about what is the role of india and what are the steps that india can take to establish democracy in myanmar okay so and there is also one more article here so article here says new cold war so this article is talking about new cold war so actually this article is saying that here we have north korea and here we have russia so russia is there here we have north korea and here we have china so already we know that russia and china they are improving their relations and now again russia is improving their relations with north korea and these three countries they are becoming as a block okay it is against whom it is against us and recently there is one issue that we studied that is there is trade war like conditions between in china and us right so if these three they are coming together and they are forming a block which is against us so this will appear as a new cold war era so actually what is this old cold war era so during 1960s there was two power blocks that formed so that was like on one side ussr on one side usa okay so what are the things that happened in this 1960s so the same things which are going to repeat in this uh, in this coming years so we are seeing that we are going to have new cold war era okay now let us see these two articles together so this article says that russia north korea security pact which signals that yes we are going to have new cold war alliance against western countries so which of the countries which are part of this new cold war alliance we have russia north korea and china so what are the key insights which are given here so the security pact between russia north korea so this says that yes there is a significant shift towards new cold war era alliance 
and next actually russia is also increasing its cooperation with countries at odds with us so actually these two countries are enemy countries right us and us again north korea they are enemy countries okay so because of this actually this grouping of russia china and north korea they want to counter this western countries which are led by us okay and actually whenever they are coming with this security pact that will hinder the effects or efforts of north korea's denuclearization okay so that is the thing which mainly said and i want to say one more thing so on one side grouping which are the members we have north korea we have russia and we have china so to counter this which are the countries which are forming bloc so we have us if north korea is there we have south korea okay so we have south korea and also we have japan okay so this is a new cold war era combination so we have north korea we have russia china on one side us japan and south korea on another side so this is the thing you have to remember so what is this new cold war so normally news we can see this word new cold war it is to describe contemporary geopolitical tensions between major powers so which are those major powers here us russia and north korea south korea okay so actually these tensions how it is going to impact so it is going to have impact both strategically economically and also technologically as well okay so who are the key players in this new cold war as i said we have us we have china we have russia so you have to know these three countries for sure right and now let us see like the major areas of conflict so where the conflict is going on so first one is there is technological rivalry there is rivalry that is a dispute between the technologies of these countries like for example 5g technology communications for example artificial intelligence for example machine learning etc and next one is trade and economic cooperation or competition in this area also there is having dispute for example trade war between now ongoing us and china next one is the issue which is going on with this bri belt and road initiative so those are the things which are challenging us economic interest and third one is military and strategic issues so south china sea in the south china sea always there will be increasing of tensions because of chinese expansionist maritime policy and next one is here us started supporting this taiwan and again it is one of the cause of concern of relationship between us and china and the next one is nato is also one important issue between russia and as well as usa and next important major areas of conflict here is cyber security and as well as information warfare so there are cyber attacks are mainly done by the countries on critical infrastructure of countries okay that's it and next mind map is talking about impacts and implications so first one here is what will be this global governance and alliance okay so there will be shifting in of this global grouping and as well as alliances and next one is there will be economic decoupling like countries they will be imposing sanctions on other countries for example us have this cartsa that is countering of american adversaries through sanction act that can be imposed on the countries that are against this us and next one is even there will be issue in of this innovation self sufficiency so these are the impacts and implications of this new cold war and now let us see the mains question so mains practice question is examine the contemporary geopolitical tensions between major powers often referred as new cold war what are the main areas of conflict and i said about that and you have to write what is the impact i also gave a mind map regarding what are the challenges and what is the impact right yes now let us see next question next topic okay next topic it is about india myanmar policy 
So actually this article says that India needs to come up with a progressive policy towards Myanmar. And especially we have to focus on democracy. We have to focus on human security. And as well as humanitarian aid. So all these are very important. Okay. And if you see the key insights of this article, it says that India is having the values and India is also focused on interest okay, of Myanmar. So because of this, to protect the people and to protect the human rights of the people, we need to have a progressive policy towards Myanmar. And we have to stop weapon sale to Myanmar. Because of that weapons only, they are killing the civilians. They are creating the violence. First of all, we have to stop weapon sale to Myanmar. And next one is we have to open humanitarian corridors. So we can provide much needed and displaced like Myanmar civilians. And whoever the people who are entering into India for asylum, so they, they should not be deported back. Okay. So we have to focus on halting of detention as well as deporting of these people back to Myanmar. So all these are very important. And now let us see next topic. It is about 98 Indians that died during annual Hajj pilgrimage. So annual Hajj pilgrimage is very important from your art and culture from GS paper one point of view. So let us see this article in detail. So let us see what is summary. So whenever the people who are going to this Hajj pilgrimage, so normally old people will be going to this pilgrimage. So because of natural causes, because of chronic illness, because of old age, so they had been died. But how many? 98 people had died. Okay. So here, Ministry of External Affairs, it said that about 98 people who died during this pilgrimage to Hajj. And the deaths are because of natural causes, because of increasing of age, because of chronic illness, because of old age, etc. So what is Hajj pilgrimage? So Hajj pilgrimage is a, one of the five pillars of Islam. Okay. So it is having a very huge religious significance for Muslims. So in this Muslims, uh, if you see these people, they want to go to this Hajj at least once in their lifetime. So here if you see religious significance, one is pillar of Islam. So Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam, making it mandatory act of worship for, for Muslims, especially they have to physically or financially capable of undertaking this uh, journey at least in once in their lifetime. Okay, so this is the thing. And next one is you have to focus on the spiritual purpose also. So here the pilgrimage is intended to foster a sense of unity. Okay, they are focusing on sense of unity and sense of equality among the Muslims, etc. Okay, so that is the thing. And next one is in which city is the Kaaba? The focal point of Hajj pilgrimage is located. So please let me know where it is located. And the main question is, analyze the economic impact of Hajj pilgrimage on Saudi Arabia and how does it contribute to the economy and what are the associated challenges? So all these are the very important and try to answer these questions. So that's all students. So these are the very important topics that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. And today is Saturday, there is no opinion page, there is no text and context. So whatever the important articles are there, so I covered in this analysis. So by this I'm concluding and don't forget to like this video and please do share this video to your friends and please do subscribe to Rathod's Science Academy. And one more sincere request is you can join live orientation class on Art of Mains Answer Rating tomorrow at 4 p.m. So for that you need to download the app. The app link is given in the description box. Thank you so much for watching guys.